eight hours. <laughs> oh, I'm already, I already got the. Yeah, we're already on. Well, sort of. I'm watching the live feed right now. Okay, something's happening. Oh, it's snap. Oh, snap. I don't see a picture, though. So let me redo mine. I'm lowering the audio on my laptop so the audio from my phone doesn't. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it looks good. Echo. <clears throat> Earth to echo. Earth to echo. There's my buddy, Juanatan. Hey, Jacob. What's up, Jacob? What's up, guys? I hope the pictures are good. Cool people over here. This is our first time to do this, so we're kind of learning. Pardon our not knowing what the hell we're doing. <laughs> I think we figured it out pretty good, though. <clears throat> you know what I I'm see people gonna, do is like moderators to watch the stream, but I don't know how to do yeah. that. You can do it. It's easy. You uh, just go over the name. Uh huh. And you right click it, and you give them the uh, the ability to go to to do that. I can't see the stream on my laptop though. Let me see if I can do it. There's Blucher, Blucher in the house. Uh, yeah. We need to make Blucher a mod. Oh yeah, David, I, I love Hellboy. I can't wait to see the. The new actor, the guy from what Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see him. See how that goes. I saw some pictures, and it kind of some of it looked CG to me. I don't know what to expect because he ain't that big. <laughs> He's not muscular like that. Nah, but he got in ridiculous shape for that role. Because he and then so he immediately so got a beer belly again afterwards for, for, Stranger, for Stranger Things. Things. Yeah, he had to fluctuate his weight. That's crazy. Yeah, he pulled uh, what's uh, the guy that was Batman, Christian Bale. Yeah, they hired yeah, Christian the... Bale to be uh, Dick Cheney in the Dick Cheney buyout. Oh, and he put eighty pounds of fat on for the role. That's crazy what you do, but I guess and instead of just hiring an old fat guy who's already old and fat, there's plenty of fat actors that could have done it. Let's make Christian Bale do it. Oh yeah. Ron Perlman will be missed. Uh, you know, he was the, <laughs> the destruction. <clears throat> but I like Ron Perlman and all the anything he comes out in all the B movies. He's just good. <laughs> He's just dope. You like my Toms? Hey man. Perlman just he just just got too old. Yeah. He still pulls it off on all these little B movies he does. Yeah. <clears throat> a Thundercats movie. Man, I wonder what that would look like to do it. Like with, I think you know, they would have to do CGI, but it would really, have to be really good voice cast. cast. Yeah, that would be hard to do. But I mean, a really good CGI would be cool to watch. Like <clears throat> something on par with uh, with the uh, Avatar, the Cameron Avatar movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of graphics. That would be fine. I mean, the Avatar looks good on that show. Like, I'm di I dig those aliens. Yeah, my channel is Sandman PR Vlogs. As Kevin adds S's to everything. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's just a Texas thing. C. <laughs> it's yeah, a it's Spanglish. Spanglish. <laughs> just plural everything. I don't know why I do that. It's just. Any of y'all get these? Ooh, I love it. Looks like a TV set. I know it's. I like you know it a lot. Dials. Dials. You yeah. remember the old TVs with the freaking dials, bro? Yeah. Yep. It I had like only control. odd numbers, like three, seven, nine, thirteen. <laughs> I'm old. Yeah, you know what? Last year's, the, I think the new this year's is better, even for the common stuff you get. Like, if it's non-chase, it's still way better than last year. They did good. I'm glad you're happy. We got so a bunch far, of these skins. The, the same two that you opened on camera so far? Yeah. You'll that, catch them on sale. Yeah, last year they were like, out for months. You and caught months. them on clearance, bro. Didn't you get them like 10 or 8 or 7 yeah. boots? Yeah, we'll, we'll end up getting them. January, you'll stock up. 
<laughs> Jacob. And you'll that get some dairies. Hard. Yeah. Yeah, I came with these little pins. This one you can't see here, but it's like goofy and stuff. My wife loves it. Doesn't really show too well. Goofy pin, huh? They both had the same pin? Yeah, they both had the same pin, unfortunately. I like this uh, little goofy Max, Goof Troop Max. Yeah. And uh, female, the Angela. I was gargoyles more excited with the, definitely the uh, gargoyles. Uh huh. It was nice. Last year, I didn't care. Both of those were dope shows during our childhood, though. Definitely. And this is not for everybody here, but, I mean, it was two of the serial icon Pez, which was good also. And you're in the Pez kick right now, so. Yeah. I still like my vintage Pez better, but these are nice. So. They are nice. There's not a better brand than Funko to represent that retro product. For sure, for sure. <clears throat> I think I have about uh, since there's nine people, just to say, I got like about six or seven packages of toys that I can open tonight as well. I think what we're planning on doing is we're gonna shoot the breeze a little bit, and then uh, maybe open up some toys and just talk, and then we'll get to the Q and A right after that. Sound right, right, Sandman? It sounds magnificent. <laughs> I sound Thank like you, old, old Hubert from. Are you on? Yeah. The TV's fine. You're good. Yeah, that, that, uh, that uh, Chase of Angela looks cool. I was really hoping one of these were the Chase. The Angela Chase is all like. You'll uh, get her. Carmen You'll get her when you mop up them boxes on clearance. Yeah, any of them I would have been happy for, to be honest. What's up, two vertical? Ho oh, ho, Judson in the house. Plastic cannibals. Oh, yeah. Judson you. Osgood. You. Homie's been cleaning up this uh, last two days on toys. Oh, uh, yeah. I think he scored the uh, the three pack. I don't know what in MCU 10 year deal he scored oh. ridiculously cheap. No, no, he got the Ray Speeder for ten bucks. The Ray Speeder, the oh, black the big series, the six inch. Yeah, yeah. I had that. I don't know what I did with it. I think I traded it. Yeah, in. there's the Blucher. Hey, can you try hitting those three dots next to Blucher <clears throat> on the chat and see if you can give him the moderation? Let's see. Of moderation of domination. I'm not actually seeing the stream on my laptop at all. You Just should see a top chat. The same, the, the place where the oh. question, oh, you're just seeing the questions appear and then they vanish? Yeah. You're not seeing an actual, see, the viewers get to see the chat open all the time. You're yeah. hosting, so your yeah. view is different. But I have my my phone, but my phone, uh, I can't do anything on the, the iPhone as far as, like, <clears throat> getting out rank. Well, you guys are just going to have to behave yourselves. Yeah, we trust you. Can't you. We can't moderate nobody. No no band hammers in this one. Everybody has to be good boys and girls. Dave Blucher. Blucher's videos and collectibles. Oh, ho, Dondi's in the chat. Dondi. Yeah, That's Toy Don. Don. Mr. Toy Don, he should get up here on the and BS with us if he had the Google Hangout. Yeah, two verticals a good boy. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Can you? You can't do it on the phone. That's what I thought. I unfortunately. <laughs> Trendmaster, someone's asking you about Trendmaster. <laughs> the toy company. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, Trend Masters came out with a lot of good stuff back in the day. Definitely. Give me an example of what Trend Masters had. Let's look it up. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's cheat. <laughs> oh, yeah. It says here they're real good. I, I can already see they did some Godzilla, I guess, before NECA. When are you coming to hunt in the McAllen area? 
Oh man, I'm not that far. I'm actually from Falfuria, so that's like an hour away from McAllen. David Patrick says that the the Unmosis Jones toys. Oh yeah. I need to watch Osmosis Jones. I can't even remember the movie anymore. My wife was like saying, talking about it today, saying that she'd like to. I Jacob can't even remember. To be careful of trolls. Carnage. What's up, party people? In the easy. Lemon squeezy. Speaking Osmosis Jones. Time. Osmosis Jones. I need to watch that again. I know I've seen it. Uber but I can't in the house. Uber. Tell them to behave. Hulk smash. There you go. ID4, Iron Giant, Battlefield Earth, Tarzan. Battlefield Earth, dude. What a terrible movie. You know, yeah. I love it, though. At the same time, it's, it's awful. I don't Those know. Dreads. John Travolta. Those dreads. <laughs> yeah, right? They're awful. Oh, God. The toys look cool, though. <laughs> if you say so, boss. You don't like them? No. I need legend in the house, Hector. <clears> oh, <throat> lie. Was it, it was a good movie. I was just watching his jam video. Oh, six. yeah, at least he's got some good thoughts. I, I love Juggernaut. <clears throat> yeah, that Juggernaut's sweet. I've never seen him in person. I almost picked up two pops today, man. I was very what? close. It was uh, Wayne's World. Garth and, oh, you yeah, and Mike. That I, I almost had them. <clears throat> and, you know, they were on sale because uh, GameStop has yeah, all yeah. the eleven ninety nine pops for $8 for right eight. now. That's what they used to be. Yeah. You know, Just for the pops, the yeah. highest they were was 8 bucks. Yeah. Now like everyone's that. trying to get $12, $13 out of a regular-ass pop. <laughs> Yeah, Justin. My standards on movies, bro. I just there's 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 overkill. Yep. Mr. O forty eight. He just nabbed that uh switch for Black Friday. Buzz Lightyear. The, the one that comes with the Pokeball. I like any Buzz Lightyear and I like all those figures. I wish I could get some nice figures from Toy Story. <clears throat> but some of the older ones. Oh yeah, yeah. Zach Ryder, he collects uh, Toy Story stuff. Does he? Yeah, you know he's got a toy hunting channel, right? Is that what I want? I know I watched a couple of videos. Him about... and uh, his old tag team partner, Curtis Hawkins, they have a, ta- a toy hunting channel. That's pretty awesome. And Zach's cool only spending way more than Kurt. You ready to open something? I guess I can as we... Look how many are in here, bro. You're a little bit here. Hey, that's nice. 18, man. I like 18. That's a good number. It's legal. <laughs> you crazy. The first one I got, this is the, from the Jim Carrey movie, but I think these are the animated version. This is going to be from Mask. Mm-hmm. Got a couple of these. Toys. I don't know if that's clear to see. And who made that? Kenner? Dang. Still kind of dark in here. Uh, Toy Island. Toy Island. Toy Island. Yeah, it was uh, Playmates. Playmates did the movie, and these are from the animated line, and these are from Toy Island. I actually picked up a Toy Island uh, RoboCop. They started doing RoboCop. They were doing a lot of stuff. I remember Toy Island now. Now that you mentioned RoboCop. Yeah. I like these though. He looks cool with the 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 mobster suit. Mm-hmm. Man, your picture is so much clearer than this webcam. It's these uh, daytime light bulbs, brother. And this one's like a commando mask. Didn't show too well, right? It kind of looks like a taxi cru- crusader a little bit. It does. It does. He's got the build of one. That's another line that I would like to get uh, the entire wave is that toxic Seder. That's definitely a cool one. <clears throat> I'm going to open this easy stuff up right now. Take a tasty. 
I got a few boxes and a few envelopes. Oh, I got some vintage G.I. Joes. His quality is low right now because he's running off of a laptop. Yeah, it's not my phone. And I'm on my phone, so. In order for him to have me on to ask him the questions, he's going to be on the laptop. So bear with us on the uh, clarity, guys. Rick, this was a mellow way. Do you recognize the refrigerator? Oh, yeah. This is an early 80s. Joe? G.I. Joe. He's in good shape. Did you get him for a good price? Yeah. Yeah, I got him. I need to get the accessories, but. I got all these here. I got three vintage Joes, and then I got the Perry with them for five bucks. Three vintage Joes, two complete for five bucks. This is Outback. This was was this Outback? I'll bet I can't really I remember tell. him. He's too blurry. Yeah. If you want to, we'll hop right to the question since these guys are saying they can't. Maybe you just do a video sure. on your phone. On your phone. I could do that. We're gonna go right to the questions, yeah. guys. A few months ago, Kevin wanted to do a Q and A, uh, and and uh, we thought it would be cool if I would ask the questions and he can answer live. So I'm gonna go back to two months ago, and the very first question was by Steve Collects. What was the what was your first tattoo, and how old were you when you got it? My first tattoo was. Uh, it's gone now, but where this tiger is, <clears throat> I was 17 years old, which is illegal. I did it in some dude's kitchen. He did it a homemade with a guitar string. It was a black and white, uh, black and gray tiger underneath this one, but it's gone now. You can't see it anymore. But yeah, that was my first tattoo. And you were 17. And I was 17, kitchen. sitting at a kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. And he also wanted to mention that he loved your channel. So that was Steve Collects. Do check Steve. out his content. He's a collector. He's a great guy. He yeah, loves nice guy. Great YouTuber. He's from Canada. He loves the Blue Jays. If you're an MLB guy, he's very baseball knowledgeable. That's rare this day and age. The next question is from Nate the Great Simmons, uh, the Syndicate Santa. As a fellow collector, we've seen that hunting can be hard sometimes to find what we love. Has it become easier or to just order online to ensure you get what you want? Don't get me wrong. I love the thrill of finding something in the wild. It's just been so dry in my area. So that's his form of a question. Yeah. No, I'm for, for people, for just about everybody, it's so much easier to get online and get exactly what you need. If you're a completionist, especially, I guess it depends on what mindset you are as far as what type of collector you are. If you're a completionist and you like to knock out, you know, certain waves at a time and you're methodical about how you collect, yeah, then that's great. Some people are like kind of like freelance, like, you know, I'm just, I just go with the flow. I, I'm not trying yeah. to collect anything specific usually, unless like it was those, you know, those uh, Funko Thundercats. Yeah, I knew when they were coming out. Little things like that, I will definitely go out and, but 99% of the time, I'm just going out to look, so for a collector like me, that doesn't matter. Like being able to, I do order stuff. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah. I, but nowadays I don't order as much as I do uh, auctions. The, the auctions really is what's those. got you now, right? The live yeah, auctions. online auctions. And you come it's, out with some great prices, way lower than eBay. Yeah, lower than eBay prices. That's why I like it. So Because your interests are going to vary from the other people who are bidding with you. For sure. All right, I Myrolia four oh eight says, "What's your oldest toy, and what's your oldest comic book?" <clears throat> oldest toy, oldest comic book, uh, oldest toy. Believe Is it or not, Wizard of Oz thing. No, I got some. I got a a train back in the thirties. Mm -hmm. They used to make their toys by they'd get metal like aluminum, mm -hmm. and they would mm -hmm. have these big machines, and they would stamp shapes into trains and trucks. Well, I got mm -hmm. a nice. 30s train with a with everything it's got like, like die cast like actually like 
Yeah, it's metal. The it was made of metal. Car parts and stuff. Right. Yeah, like they used to stamp out bumpers and. Right. Yeah. So yeah, my oldest piece is a train. I think it's thirty-two. Nineteen thirty-two. Yeah, that's my oldest. Old, bro. How did you obtain that? My dad got it for me. He found it, it somewhere. Was it his personal train, or he found it and gave it? To you? Yeah, he found it for me. Mm. But that's he's not like he's like me. He's a junker, a picker. He looks through. Yeah, ordering. Yeah. He's always like, we might need this labor, better save it. Yep. My old man's the same way. Yeah. What about your oldest comic book? Uh, I have issues one and two of uh, 1977 Star Wars comics. Ooh. I think, well, you know what? But I do have some. Uh, you have one and books. two? Yeah, I have one and two. Oh, man. I have like 11, but not. Man, one and two, that's great. One and two, yeah. And I've got, uh, actually, there was a magazine, too, from Issue One Magazine for that, 77 as well. I have that one. I have them all uh, on frames. <clears throat> okay, moving right along. Uh, Big Chow, what's your favorite toy? Man, my favorite toy. It's tough, isn't it? Yeah, that one's tough. It's like, uh, young. how do you choose? Yeah. That's hard. I guess I would pick my Amigos, my 74s. Your my original, original Amigos? Yeah. Any yeah, particular gotta... characters or people come to mind in those? Um, the first man, one is going to be... Uh, I think I would pick from the Amigo one, so I would pick my uh, Captain America because it was a gift from my wife. And it's nice okay. in box, you know. <clears throat> it's hard to find the boxes in good shape, too. That's a from good answer. Before. I've never had one before. I've never owned Amigo. Life Anime Gaming, Dondi, the Toy Don, says, Love the channel. My question for you is, if you had to pick toy out from your collection to get rid of, I pick one toy and get rid of the rest, what would that toy be? Is that the same answer, the cat? <clears throat> you know, that one's easy because uh, uh, maybe about four years back, uh, I was a collector then too, but... I had a consignment shop space where I sold toys. Right. And it was always easy. I would clear out all my modern stuff. I didn't really care as much about the 2000s. Right. So that those are easier for me to get rid of, to be honest. Right. <clears throat> I don't, the I'm not sentimental attachment was barely there. Yeah, it wasn't there. Like, it was the you old stuff. really looked at it as something to gain money with, as a, as a profit. Yeah, as it a wasn't. Pool. It wasn't anything I cared for as much as I thought I did. I've talked started. to a lot of guys that own shops, and they've made it to where they don't want cat attached to anything anymore. <clears throat> yeah, not the flag. They actually, the last thing they want to do when they're not at work is talk about toys. Yeah, to them, all they see is uh, dollars and cents. Yeah, they lose the passion for the. I wouldn't want to be in that position, personally. Jacob, hey, what's your I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Three months ago. Love your channel. Keep up the hunt. What was the first toy or collectible you got? The first toy or collectible I got. That you <clears throat> but at what age? Because I've, you know, I've been getting toys. Whatever since. you want to, if you want to do it when you came back into collecting. Oh, you know you what? I got a funny one. Me. I think I was, uh, it was in the mid 80s. Yeah, it was around 10. And I remember collecting 99 pennies. And that's how much <laughs> vintage, well, they're vin at that time they weren't vintage, but vintage Star Wars were 99 cents at Toys R Us at the time. And I remember oh, the man. cashier hated me because I threw 100 okay, pennies okay. up. And she had to count 100 pennies, you know? <laughs> Which is so easy. That how old were you? I was 10, and I remember it was uh, Chewy. Chewy's who you got? No wonder <laughs> you're so sentimental with Chewy. Yeah, I like that big guy. <laughs> um, great question from Jacob Luna. Uh, Prolio, how long have you been collecting? What got you into collecting toys? What sparked the interest? I guess this is since you've been doing YouTube from since yeah. then. Uh, I've been collecting a, uh, my whole life, really, on and off. I've actually had small collections i've been married four times and mm -hmm. every single time i got divorced i would lose like Not all my stuff all. i would just leave it behind and start over start yeah. over start over but yeah, yeah i've been buying stuff forever since since the 80s you know i mean my parents whatever they got me in the 70s i had 
Is it true what they say? Everything is replaceable if you look. <laughs> yeah, everything's replaceable. I mean, family first. Uh, anything else can be replaced. And maybe that's why your mantra is never give up that hunt because. That's right. You, you never know. You, you have, have to do it again. found stuff that you thought you wouldn't have again and you've got it now. That's right. <laughs> exactly. I've, I can remember like. I, a lot of people, you know, they say, I wonder where all my stuff was. It's probably burned and buried in the back of your mom's yard. From Now, you got a question here from B. Stillwell72. Wants to know, where were some of your favorite toys and toy lines when you were – what were some of your favorite toys and lines as a kid? As a kid, it's definitely going to be the main ones. It's going to be He-Man, G.I. Joe, Thundercats. Silverhawks. Silverhawks, yeah, one of my favorites. Going on about those things, especially the cartoons. Like I, I found those so boring as a kid. No Did disrespect. Really? <laughs> I, I had friends who had the lunch boxes and the figs. Yeah, and they just did not hold my interest at all. I don't know For what sure it was. Much. Yeah, He Man. Now, Masters of the Universe. I'm right there with you. Yeah, yeah. I like. I loved them all. Pretty much every one of those. I liked all the 80s lines is my favorite stuff. And like whatever, when I go to uh like you know to look for stuff, I try uh -huh. to get like the lines that weren't the main stuff, like not Transformer G.I. Joe or the uh -huh. big name. Maybe Star that's Wars, why you have, Joe. Uh, maybe that's why you have so many like brave stuff. <laughs> yeah, I like that kind the of more stuff. Like, Buck your hair. A little more oddities as far yeah, as Exo, toys. Remember your little Exo Squad kit you was I on? I've got a few of them now, yeah. I love the Exo Squad. Okay, you got a question from Two Vertical, and I believe he's in the live stream right now listening to this. He wanted to know what got you into YouTube. Oh, man. To be honest with you, I uh, <clears throat> just this past year or so ago, I started wanting to look up on YouTube. I know I knew nothing of Toy Hunt videos. None of that. A little over like two years ago, maybe. Mm. And I started to look up. I wanted to see just uh, 80s toy collections, like the whole right. room. <clears throat> so that's what I was looking for. And the first one I found was uh, what's Pixel Dan and Chartamus. Chartamus. Those two. And then I, I ran into Toy Talk. Toy Talk. Right. Art. Talker and, Art. Right. Yeah. And then Talker Art gave a shout out to Plastic Attic. Uh -huh. and that's how I found like Syndicate and started and putting there. Plastic, the Just greatest of movie is he was pushing the Syndicate. Right, and once I, I just then I said, you know what, I've got a ton of toys. I already go out and I do these toy hunts, you know. Yeah. I, but the stuff I like, like I try to stay away from retail stores. It's hard to do that because a lot of times that's all that's around for us. But you know, the garage sales, the flea markets. I thought, man, you don't see as much of those things. Maybe right, it's more boring. Walmart, Target games, <clears throat> right? And I don't knock people because I do it too, but it gets old. Okay, it it's a great question. Too vertical. Uh, G Hunter 54. If you could live your whole life with one figure, what would it be? Man, that was a tough one with just one figure. Shoot, I guess uh, I'll take He Man. Just the, the standard he man or the battle damage one? Uh, I prefer the battle damage one where his chest rolled. Oh, yeah. The yeah, head and skull cool. where it looked like they hit each other. Yeah, I do like those. I guess I'd still take the standard. <laughs> yeah, but I do you the want all the accessories, though. Yeah, I want all the accessories. Rafael Vendale Venezuela, I could be butchering that. Wants to know what was the best deal that you can remember that you got? <clears throat> this was a uh, a couple of years ago. The wifey and I went into a Goodwill, and uh, for it was like almost ten bucks. It was a uh, Castle Grayskull vintage, the '80s Castle Grayskull, and it had clear packing tape around it. And I looked inside the top, and I could see a massive uh, Ziploc bag with packing tape around it, and it had multiple uh, He-Man figures and loaded with accessories. Oh, man, I got so excited. I wasn't doing videos yet at the time, but it cost me 10 bucks, and it had a full uh, He-Man complete. It had Battle Cat complete, the originals, a, mm -hmm. a bunch. It had about six or seven figures in there and a ton of accessories for 10 bucks. I thought that was the best deal. Well, you was, like, grinning for the year. Yeah. 
and that same uh, that same Goodwill, I found uh, the the real Ghostbusters '80s fire fire station yeah. for a dollar. Yeah, for yeah. two dollars maybe. That's a pretty pretty epic deal right there, Kevin Cito. Yeah, yeah. and then Very for three dollars, I found the Snake Mountain for three bucks, kind of oh, around yeah. the same time frame. I had Snake Mountain as a kid. And, and the loud mouth that you know that I am personally, because we know each other. Yeah. I stayed on that <laughs> daggone microphone and I drove my brother, my mom, everyone oh, in yeah. crazy just doing simulated talk shows like we're doing right now. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that was a good question, Raphael. Uh, everyone who's watching live, hang in there. We're going to start doing live questions as soon as I'm done with these ones that were recorded months ago. So hang in there. Thanks for your patience. 23 fans. He's part of tag team. Oh, yeah. How many figures do you have in your collection, and what is your favorite line? I think my favorite line overall is probably Kenner. I think they do a lot of different toys <clears throat> that I like, so I probably would pick Kenner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would estimate my loose... I like to collect loose more than I do carded. I do have a lot of carded, mm -hmm. but I like I'm the type that likes to pose my stuff outside of the card. That's just me. <clears throat> so I probably have maybe a thousand at least. Maybe over a thousand. Yeah, just loose. I've got some huge totes and they're all full. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks we'll crazy. find out soon in the spring when you have your tour room. Yeah, I'm hoping January, February, March, somewhere in that you time. Go ahead and talk about that real quick about what your toy room is going to. Yeah, I'm hoping that we get to move and uh, I get an extra room within the next three or four months. Now, this is an idea I was pitching to Kevin. Each wall of this room would be a different time era, a 70s and older wall, 80s yeah. wall, 90s wall, and then current. Yeah. 2000 and, and now is all current. That would be cool, right? <clears throat> I wanted to do that to begin with, like, because right now... What about the shelves that you want to do, the ones from Lowe's, the slot wall? Yeah, just with the metal, I don't know what they're called, the little strips that you you uh, screw in up and down. I and think that's what Doodog uses. I think so, too. And it's good because not everything's the same height, so you want right. to adjust the distance. Well, I'm sure you're all, all of your subs and all of the people that watch you regularly are looking forward to you having that room and it being your backdrop. That I know you also want a dedicated spot for your green screen. Mm-hmm. And that'd be, yeah, you're so creative with making your intros fresh. Instead yeah. of using the same static intro, you like to keep your intro evolving. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that's more because of the, the creative side. You know, it takes over and you just... No, it's bubbling it's in your even, head. You have yeah. all these ideas that are busting out of you and you've got to make the, them. That's just the artistic aspect of doing it. It's even, you know, that's a separate thing from toy hunting. It's just that part's fun. I've always been like that, man. Um probably about 10 15 years ago i used to be uh do programming on uh, right. for yahoo you told me this i was up during I was the yahoo. uh this was right after the y2k scare and everything and yeah and i had Tim i ran i was like almost i'm mastered html coding uh web this was design. like when yahoo was the biggest search engine, right, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I enjoyed that, and I would, you know, design. I even sold like layouts for websites and stuff. I was selling people stuff on HTML layouts. Yeah, HTML. Yeah, I didn't you're do that. You're kidding me, bro. You're making me think way back now. Yeah, it was a lot All of right. fun. I'll shoot you another question. This one's from the unknown collector, sixty-seven. <clears throat> uh, he says, "How old?" I, uh, I don't think that's a question. Never mind. Hey. Orange guy says, who inspires you to collect? Who inspires me to collect? Man. I, I guess in the, in this Middle field that you're in, this toy. Yeah. I think uh, all the YouTubers that I'm subscribed to, whether they're 48, 50 subscribers mm -hmm. or they're 10,000. 5K. <clears throat> yeah, 10K. I, I see these guys. I won't lie. I mean, the, I have a special place in my heart for the vintage collectors. But I'm not doubting the, the nowadays the technology of these face scanning toys and they're amazing. Like uh, I just I enjoy seeing the guys that are out there every day doing that. That are you know doing their thing. There's so many. You Sandman, uh, Dondi, all these guys from David. You know our tag team yeah. brothers. 
Well, I mean, <clears throat> just to stray a little bit, you created the tag team toy collectors. And yeah. anyone in your position, you got to understand this Q and A is three months old. Yeah. You have just hit the 1.5 K sub mark. Yeah. Any other person in this field, in this hobby, would like to collaborate with other people who are in the same sub as you so you can gain and share. Yeah. And yet you've chosen to take this path where you've surrounded yourself with people who are well beneath the thousand mark. And we're not giving you any new viewers. You're still farming those yourself. Yeah. Why would you take that path rather than do what everyone else does and collaborate with someone who has the same subs as you? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it didn't mean it. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I want to grow and be, but I don't know. The To help people, was it takes uh, the front seat for me and my brain anyway. That's just the way it works. I mean, everything I've done my whole career, you know, as far as work and stuff has always been to help people. Well, and I guess it's the same thing. I just try to help people done nothing but help everyone that's in the tag team and every other creator that's in this hobby that yeah. you want their content you comment on their videos you like their videos you share yeah when someone hits a milestone whether it's 100 if they hit 500 you're always you know congratulating them For it's sure, the little yeah. things that make it it's cool because it, it is like we have our own little community. Like you're saying, you know, we're we're so much alike in a lot of ways. <clears throat> well, uh, got another question here. This one's from Nicholas uh, Mark Markovic. Do you like Goosebumps? Man, you know what? I never read the Goosebumps. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't. But I watched the movie with uh, Jack Black. Mm -hmm. and I love that. I love Jack Black, so maybe that helped. I thought the first one was great. I've not seen two yet. I haven't either, but he's My in it, right? And I love the movie. It. it was fun. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. I didn't get to. I think I'm probably a little too old to get into him now, but I well, do back like. Well, in our like day, we had uh, "Are You Afraid of the Dark?" Yeah. On I Nick. think I remember that. Oh God, that show was amazing. Yeah. So he does like Goosebumps. Uh, moving right along. 048, Tim Wallace, Overkill 48, Bro Marrow. Congrats on 1.5K. Thanks for being an awesome part of the toy community. I know you collect several different lines and items, but <clears throat> what is your top favorite geekdom to collect? And what it, what well, is it got you into collecting? So he, I guess he wants to know what's your Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> My Dragon Ball Z is going to be... Well, if I could be vague, it's going to be 80s, you know. I mean, stuff like the Barnyard Commando, the the Food right. Fighters. They're they're late 80s, but yeah, 80s He-Man, MOTU, early 80s. Yeah. Well, what, Joe, just that in whole your 80s. eyes, what's better than Masters in the Universe when it comes to the 80s? <clears throat> yeah, I think they they were like. Are they the pinnacle of the 80s? Yes or no, in your opinion, or Joe's are. Ah uh, man. Well, shoot, that's a hard one. I, I think they're both juggernauts. Know. Yeah, they're up. They're both up there. They're both definitely. And you could throw Star Wars in the mix for a while too, as big mm -hmm. big dogs. But I don't know. To me, MOTU, I'd probably give it to them for me personally, anyway. And that's also, thinking I do love them all. Joes because you love your Joes. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> it's hard to pick. Okay, got one here from Jamel. Depetto, he says, how long, how long you start collecting and what do you collect? Can't wait for the Q and A. Man, been, as he's everything. already said, he's collected his whole life. There's people out but there that since this marriage, how about since this marriage, how long is this current collection? The entire marriage. Yeah. We've been together eight years. I've collected all of so it. Everything you have from the beginning of this relationship until present. Yeah. What you've amassed. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say the majority of everything is starting from scratch. From the I mean, there, there's stuff I've got like that was stored away at my folks' house, like in tubs and stuff. Sure. You know, I got like a, some 80s ALF stuff, and there is some toys there, but I, the majority of it, when I really got into every, you know, weekly purchasing, is probably mm -hmm. from this past, this, yeah, this past marriage. Okay. 
the current marriage. <laughs> Just the, before the final marriage, right, bro? Yeah, that's right. I don't. I don't have it in me anymore. <laughs> and then uh, here's one by some a hole named Sandman Pierre Paul. <laughs> He says, do you feel toys are as cool nowadays as compared to your childhood? Yes and no, yes. Uh, I think they're really cool. But, I mean, at the same time, a lot of the stuff they're doing is just better versions of what we already had, you know. it's Rehash. A lot of rehash. Yeah. But, I mean, whenever they come out with some characters that were never made, that's cool. Like when Legends yeah. make a character that's not it's necessarily – there's less chances being taken in the toy industry now. <clears throat> yeah. I kind of got a little they're going for a careful price point, what it comes with. Yeah. Um, the days of seeing something that makes your head turn like the exception would be um grocery gang. That's yeah. like something from the nineties. Yeah. That comes out now. Yeah. It it has the the that retro vibe to it. There's less lines that are sticking their neck out there, right? Taking a chance, making something different, unique, and there's. I guess more that's why I would say. Cutter. Yeah, if I was gonna pick modern, modern toy. I guess like I like the Mc, McFarlane and the NECA. I mean, I think those kind of toys are more unique than twenty Marvel Legends that have the same body and a little bit different. Yeah. Things. The reusing the book of Hasbro has been yeah that that kind of burned me out a little bit for a while when they were doing that. Just, basically, how many times can you really allow yourself to buy that Green Goblin book? It's yeah. the Serpent King. It's Black Knight. Black Knight is the uh, is is Green Goblin's book. Yeah, it's just yeah. Once you start seeing that same mold, it's just. I don't know. And then you see McFarlane do it, that nothing ever looks the same. I don't know. It's just, it gets tiring, but like stuff like when thing came out, I mean, yeah, that it's a good looking. This was a figure that I was excited to get this year. One of the most excited. And yeah. I, I thought he was very risky to throw him in the infinity war wave. Yeah. But this is just reused green goblin book. Oh yeah. You can tell the texturing and all that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, like a lot of those other companies, I mean, like, but at the same time, like the cheapskate in me, I just, some of those NECA figures when they come out, they're a little too pricey for me. And I know if yeah. I like saved, it wouldn't be a big deal if I saved and stopped buying as much, but you know, it's not what I want to do. <laughs> I think NECA, NECA is right on the fence for me because I think they charge a pretty fair price for what they give you. They yeah. give a lot of alternative heads, hands. It's way but better than you have yeah, a lot of QC. They have a lot of QC issues. Though. Yeah. I hear so many heart, like your Pennywise was okay, or was there something wrong with him? He was good. Yeah, my Pennywise was good. I don't I've mess heard with a lot of much. horror stories about the joints being bad. The, I can imagine. You know, pegs broken on them and stuff. There's a QC problem with that. That sucks. They broke. <laughs> Especially like, yeah, like you said, you know, they're fair, but I mean, you don't want to spend it if it's going to be crap. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We're almost to the very bottom. Evan Huff, would you, who would go first, old lady or the collection? Make sure the answer <laughs> when she's not around. <laughs> He's uh, already man. done that three times. <laughs> <laughs> I just get rid of the collection and redo it. Oh, <laughs> because Very I can do bright. it. I need. Hey, I need a. Uh, I need some uh, stuff to film. <laughs> so look, we're here. We're we're done with the pre-recorded questions. We're gonna go live right now with who wants oh, to be yeah. in the chat. Send us. We're watching the live chat. Go ahead and send send some questions. We'll answer them as we can. Anyone got questions? You know what I should do is I should have created a a second hangout account with one of yeah. my other accounts, and then I could have used my phone to show off the toys. Let me read some of the comments here. Diamond Select, Uber Hulk says Diamond Select has a lot of figs like that. Where do you see Diamond Select as a toy maker 
in their quality? Mm-hmm. Do you put them above NECA, on par with NECA, or are they right there with Hasbro? And I think if you go by pros and cons, you know, I've never had a problem with uh, Select. Mm-hmm. I've never had a problem with anything from Select for me. And lately, like what he's talking about also, like this is Uber, right? That asks. Uber and I both really liked like the Nightmare Before uh, Nightmare Before Christmas figures and all that. Right. And I think they've been knocking out of the park with those, and they're cheap, you know, but they're nice to me anyway. I thought they're all in good shape, and they look so reminiscent of the claymation puppets. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's uh, you know cheaper than because NECA makes them as well. But Johnson uh, says that uh, NECA kills legends, in his opinion, through. Even though he owns more legend, NECA's quality is that above Hasbro's. Yeah, well, the stuff I have is in good shape, so I couldn't, I wouldn't argue with him. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people see NECA as better quality. They don't, they don't mass produce as much stuff as the Marvel Legends. You know, there's a million waves coming out. <laughs> Here's a live question from Inferno Wrestling Showcase. Tattoo Toy Hunter, do you have a big collection of WWF Hasbro figures? And what's, in your opinion, what's your opinion on the WWE flashback legends? I liked it. I, I'm I'm like a big uh, 90s and mm-hmm. 80s wrestling fan. More so, I mean, I, I'm just getting him back into wrestling with you guys lately. But I'm more from the 80s and 90s. So the flashback, I mean, I'm I like when Razor Ramon was Razor mm-hmm. Ramona. I like, you know, those figures, right? But, you know, before they got into the wolf pack and those flashbacks, I think they're like at a $13 price point. So they're not quite at as much as an elite and you get a builder figure out of it. But they're elite quality, right? I don't think they have their articulation of an elite. I don't think they have app crunch. I think they're basics, but you're getting the builder figure piece. I guess because the only ones I saw, they have like soft goods, so I really didn't see anybody. They do have soft goods, and they have, if not build a figure, they have like built a set. Yeah, that that little bedroom set. Like, uh, yeah, the uh, heartbreak bedroom, whatever. And I think my uh, vintage Rambo grill is probably going to be everything Uber Hulk has picked up recently. (laughs) He's got some. Some uh, that I don't have for sure. <clears throat> Some Rambo. of the more unique Talk characters. About, I love those Rambos as a child. I love them. My dad got them for me, and my mom hated them for it. Yeah, she thought it was too violent. But I thought those toys were amazing. I know you have a few. Seeing yeah. yours brought so many flush flash memories of playing with those things. Yeah, my whole thing, uh, like as far as my collection goes is I want to add a lot more vehicles and play sets, but I'm I'm in a stalemate with space. So as soon as the space kicks in, like I want to get a lot more of my TNT play sets, vehicles, a lot more, you know, G.I. Joe, a lot more of these Rambo. Like, you know, I want the Jeep and, you know, I'd like to get the A-Team van. <clears throat> that, no, those are Hector, a lot of girls. Hector and Inferno Wrestling are letting me know that the, uh, the flashbacks are available as basics and elites. It's, they're available wow. as cool. I didn't know that. Me either. But I mean, if you can you get them in both with a build a build a set, or is it like if they're elite, they're not build a fi- build a set? I think there are some flashbacks that are offered as elites, and then some are the basics with the build a figure included. Oh wow, that's cool. But that's just I don't know for sure. But I think Hector just confirmed what I said. Yeah, I I definitely do not have as many wrestlers as I would like. The, one of the things that I was talking to you about recently too is I want to get a a wrestling ring to display them when I have the space. Yeah, yeah. And I'm torn because originally I told myself I only want to collect like LJN or the mm-hmm. early Hasbro's from like the early '90, you know, mark. <clears throat> but now that I'm seeing all these newer ones and I see like a Elite Legends collection, they look so good. You know, yeah, that's just a nice looking set. <clears throat> so I may start collecting more modern wrestlers just to get specific ones i want to display yeah once i get my ring i think i'm gonna do it yeah well, that's, you have in the big walmarts in your area you have had so much luck finding elites for 10 or less oh yeah they're they're constantly putting elites 
on sale at my Walmart. Yeah, I, I've been they, left they, the uh, they they release waves so quickly. The older yeah. one, and then they want to make room. The ones that were from WrestleMania <laughs> this year everywhere are already on clearance. That's right. So my there's a Randy. Also, yeah, there's a Randy that comes with the WWE Championship. There's a Cena that doesn't have a bell. There's a KO that's got the United States title. You can get figs with the current titles with the straps for ten dollars or less. That's crazy, right? You got the, the Hardy now. brothers. How how stoked were you to get the Hardys? Oh, very. That's uh, one of my favorite tag team. Like I guess that are still around. Matt, yeah. Matt is done. He can't take anymore. He's done with. Yeah. See, I'm the, when I heard that he retired, he was done. I heard Jeff was injured. You had just done. found that elite like days before his. Yeah. He announced that he was just not going to be on the road anymore. And that's one of the newer ones that he still has that he has that new white stripe or whatever he's doing with his hair. So I want to get that right. Infernal Wrestling and Hector. Very cool talking about wrestling with you guys. Heck yeah. We're gonna change the subject. Uh Jonathan Padilla says, Do you think Toys R Us will be back to life soon? Oh, with that uh, Jeffrey's toy box, whatever they're doing. Or it seems like maybe an actual store again. I don't know. I guess I I don't feel like it's going to happen, but it would KB be. KB never did. came back. Yeah, they never made the comeback. I don't know if it's worth, worth it for these people. So, Do you I mean, remember... I would be hating on it, but I don't see it coming. I think there'll be mm -hmm. someone rise to the occasion eventually. Do you remember Lionel's Play World? My voice sucks. <laughs> Who? Lionel's Play World. It was a toy store from I don't the think so. They I don't had think I them in Louisiana. That's why I was asking. Maybe you had them in Texas too. I but when they so. went out, that was right when Toys R Us was really dominating. Yeah. Toys R Us was being used in movies. It was being used in in television sitcoms. Toys R Us was like this solid, not going anywhere business model. Yeah. It, they had every kind of bike. If if you wanted a lime green bike with a speaker on it, yeah, Toys R Us had it, you know. And their video game section was second to none. Their video game section was like going to something out of NASA. It looked so yeah. cool the way they displayed the consoles and the games and how many TVs were plugged in. And some of them were interactive, not all of them. Then you remember you had to go and you get the little paper and you bring the paper to the checkout and then they yeah. would give it to you at the like the like a gun, like yeah. a locker thing. Yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of uh, all the things that we love is slowly being killed off by just technology. The way we're progressing forward. I mean, I was talking to my parents the other day about it and my wife. It used to be a social event for a family to go to Blockbuster and rent a VHS tape. Yeah. And then a DVD, you know, that was, and then slowly, you know, Redbox and all these guys took, they killed it just like Amazon kind of well, helped kill Toys R Us. And you got to <laughs> think Netflix before it was the streaming service doing the sending the disc to the mailbox. Yeah, they'd mail it to you. Yeah. First, that was the first blow to Blockbuster that started the, right. the hemorrhaging. It kind of crippled them. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like just. As we move forward, it's going to take out a lot of the old stuff. They're going to find more efficient ways to do it, but we're losing, you know, the stuff that we love to do at the same time. Now, Maybe I want to read you a comment someone made. I think you would find this interesting. Um, do, 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 do. I'd like to get a ring and have fantasy wrestling battles between He Man, Skeletor, Lionel, Mumra. Imagine, if you, do fantasy football imagine if you find a, a the right retro looking ring and you put non wrestlers in there. Right. That would be cool. <laughs> I could see that in the toy room future. <laughs> that was, you know what, when uh the what was it uh not 2K wrestling, but before them, like for the Xbox 360. I forget who did the wrestling games before, but oh, man. Yeah. I was in love with uh, building my own characters. Yeah. Like that, I mean, it was amazing. You could create your own uh, finisher moves. You could put like 
several movements together to mm. finish. Man, I was hooked on that. I yeah. had like a, I bought my own external hard drive and I created tons. The SmackDown of, versus Raw game. And then you could get online and you can get all the numbers and you could create yeah. like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I mean, to the T. I used right. to love that. But I love what you're saying. I like to make all these non wrestling characters, bring them to life. I think uh, 2K. Uncle J. 2K14. Funko J's in here. Oh, yeah. Do dog. Okay. Wow. What's up, dude? Dog in here. Wow. What's up, James? <laughs> What an honor. And we got our Australian connections here. <laughs> yeah, Funko J. Do you cool. admire it of the Caribbean figs? Do I like them? Do you have, have any? Oh, do I have any? I think I, you know what? The only reason I didn't buy any, I have some because I buy a lot of those, uh, those uh, Goodwill mystery bags where it's got a zillion toys in it. I think there have been a few in those. I've actually had people find, oh, this is so-and-so. You know, I don't know everything about identify. everything. I know. Right. And they'll identify, like, this is very, I've had people tell me, like, I'll be thumbing through comic books at a thrift store, and they'll be like, you know, that was the very last episode of the G.I. Joe series ever. It's real valuable. What? And I take off the next day and go find it. <laughs> well, let's see. What question do we have here? Okay, Paris of Gandalf versus Dumbledore in a wrestling match. Who wins? Man, you know what? I'm I have to go with Gandalf, man. Yeah. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't hate Gandalf Dumbledore, but the white or Gandalf Gray? I'm gonna have to go with uh, the white. He just seems more gangster. I'm pretty sure Dumbledore could mop the floor with Gray. Yeah. Yeah, Gray didn't quite have his chops up yet. White's he can handle it. <laughs> We're geeks. <laughs> I'm with Do Dog when it comes oh. to the uh, the new Migos. Zero oh yeah, I'm not. Zero. I have not bought one of those. I mean, everything about those figures is from where they came from. You know, I remember that time in my life. Do Dog's a year them. younger than I am, and I have zero nostalgia feels for those Migos because I didn't have them as a kid. In but 80, collecting the modern ones to pay homage, I mean, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me, kind of. My sister had them. My if you collect the old stuff, buy the old stuff. They're still out. She had a lot of the female characters. but I, have I think no it's an incredible me. story. The toys that made a story about how Migo, you know, yeah. With Star Trek. And... I just think if you're going to collect the vintage, collect the vintage. I, I, I don't know. I just, it's kind of like, to me, it's like when you have that amazing movie and then they go and try to make a redo of it and ruin it so many years later. <clears throat> I will say the, the monster ones they made, I thought kind of looked cool. I wouldn't buy them, but I like them. I do love have Star Trek. Had, yes. Look at Uber Hulk. Have you ever had a figure bought out from under you? And how pissed did you get? Uh, yeah, well, I've, I've been in situations where, like, they were purchasing it already as I went in. I missed it by a few minutes or so. I don't get mad, though. I understand. That's just the nature of the beast. I'm sure there's times that I've done it and people have been bummed out. You know, I, I'm and odds are I'm gonna get because I go out so much more than the, the average person around here probably. So. I was a <laughs> bit mad the day that I told Tim, "Let's go look at this J.C. Penney's because I'm hearing people are finding Revan." Oh yeah, and it's like yeah, okay, I'll go with you. Yeah, and he gets to Revan before I do, and he buys it. Damn, that's cold. <laughs> like a friggin' rogue, he's so much faster and nimbler than me. This woman we found in the men's department, we're like, do y'all have toys? She was nice enough to walk us to where the toys were. And <laughs> That's messed up. As soon as Star Wars was in sight, he just takes off like friggin' like a stealth character, like a ranger. <clears throat> Who did that and to I'm you? A, I'm a heavy. I'm a tank. I'm taking forever. You gotta trip him. 
And he's over there. He's already got Revan in hand, and he's laughing. Dang it. That's wrong. I would have let you have it, bud. Mostly because I don't want him, but I would have let you have him. <laughs> it was hard to film because he's like, "Get, make sure you get me holding it like this. You're like, you jerk. I didn't have, I was, at the, was the one time I had nothing to say. Man, that's messed up, right? But he got it. That, that, that was a hot figure for a while, wasn't it? That was pretty. It's, uh, the circulation is good. Yeah, it's what? starting to pick up. I mean. And somebody who has one, I'm happy to hear that because. Oh, yeah. I need to go to the Reverend brought a generation of people who had no idea Star Wars was as cool as it was until they played Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. I'm one of those rare birds where I like Star Trek too. And Star Trek, you gotta. It's really for us old dudes. <laughs> but I like Star Trek as well. I saw someone comment. They picked up some Star Trek figures. <clears throat> I, I collect Star Wars figures too, Playmates. I mean, Star Trek figures. I got a question from Infernal Wrestling. He says, are there any Grail Pops you would like to have in your collection? Uh, Grail Pops, I like. Uh, I would like to have gotten the original wave of uh, He-Man, the MOTU. The originals, they're worth a ton. Uh, I think I would like to get... Uh, the first wave of Futurama. I would like to get uh, the Simpsons. I don't know if you saw, but I got when uh, Funko took when Funko actually took over the company they are today. I've got the very first wave of Simpsons Wacky Wobblers from them. Mm -hmm. They're they're actually like 13, 14 years old. Also, uh, man, there's a ton that I would like. <clears throat> I saw some old Tupac and Biggie pops that are really old now that I thought were really cool. And they're worth like a lot. You don't see very many people with them. I wouldn't mind them making disenchanted Funko Pops. And they probably yeah. will because they've got like a. I saw a show that's new. I can't remember which one it was. It's new and they already made Pops for it. And it's like a brand new TV series. It's not even been around a season or so. So I think that uh that that show is going to be a, a way, around for a while. Now, Doodog being an 80s kid says G.I. Joe, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Masters of the Universe, Kit, the General Lee, Dukes of Hazard. That was the strong brands of <coughs> childhood. Those are the best. That's, I think, uh, 80s toys or, you know, it's not, if you had to be locked in an endless decade loop, which one would you pick? The 80s? Yeah, I would have to pick the 80s. Well, it depends just for toys or for life, too, because there's a life lot of action. Too. We weren't getting life. We weren't getting a lot of action in the 80s. So we're going to have to go life without a lot too, of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the whole deal. Funko J is jealous <laughs> because they do not have Black Friday. She said that. And yeah, her and her pops don't have that. But they have like that pop culture store. They got some pretty cool stuff. I've seen their videos where they have some really great thrift stores. Yeah, but they didn't they didn't get Black Friday. Which and that's a shame. Jonathan Padilla says, come tomorrow to the valley. I need to. I'm gonna go over there and Juan's gonna have to show me around his hood, like his areas of where you can hunt and stuff like that. Yeah, he is a, uh, he's a big time vintage collector too. Oh, is he? he some, yeah, he's got some great stuff. He's he sent me some stuff too to help me out with my so I would like to hang out and go vintage hunting with him one day. <clears throat> now that do mentioned a uh, kit and like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that would be cool to get like, cause they used to have the, the three and three quarter inch mm -hmm. car that you could put the yeah, figures in. He would have the light on the Michael, front. Michael Knight. Yeah. Those were great toys. Yeah. The, the, the AT van. Yeah, the General Lee with, it fits the three and three quarter yeah. inch figures. Those are the vehicles of the eighties. You have the DeLorean from back to the future. <laughs> The eight you have uh, the one you just mentioned, Kit. Mobile, General Lee. Yeah, right. Kit. Yeah, those the, are super. Uh, the Tim Burton Batmobile was like so ahead of the game. Like that's my yeah, uh, that ninety for Michael Keaton, mm -hmm. and then I like the sixty six and I like the ninety. Those are the the best two. Now Hector says Target employees are enemy to the collecting community. I have to agree. I think they're all they're all back there on the internet selling as shit comes in. 
Overkill48 wants to know, did you ever play Hero Clicks? No, but you know what? I've often thought about uh, collecting because I saw a Fing Fang Foom from that, and it's a legit size. Yeah. I never got to play it, though, but it looks amazing. Ecto, definitely Ecto-1. I have the 80. 80 yeah. You can't talk Ecto-1. Of- you can't talk 80s vehicles and not mention Echo 1. Yeah, that's one of the biggest iconic. Yeah. That's one of them I have for sure. Definitely. <clears throat> I actually yeah. would like to collect that entire uh, 80s waves of the real Ghostbusters. I'm, I'm just missing a few here and there. Overkill actually has a bunch of hero clicks and he used to play it. Does he really? During its prime. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're apparently valuable too. They they rate they yeah, rate they're collectible value. They go up in value. Yeah. Like I said, I, I was seeing the, the Fing Fang Foom figure for that game, and it was expensive on eBay. If you had to pick between Batman Forever and Batman versus Robin Batmobile, which would you rather? Oof, Batman Forever. I don't Batman remember Batman. Them. I don't That's think they were forgettable. A... They were compared to yeah. Keaton. You know, I liked them both, but yeah, I, I like Keaton's better. But both of those were cool. But I think as it went into those movies, it got kind of more cartoonish. More, I don't know. They kind of overkilled on the real flashy, comic-y kind of. I don't know because I think when Michael Keaton did it, it was just dark, and then you got you know Jack Nicholas. I don't know. There was like a a, a nice dark fantasy vibe to it. And mm. as it went, I think they went more comic-ish with everything colorful. And <clears throat> I like them, though. I like cheesy stuff like that. So, <laughs> Uncle Jay wants to know, when it comes to collecting vintage Pez, what should I look for? Oh, Pez. You know what's hard with Pez is they do not put prices on, I mean, uh, years on any of them. I've got 80s Pez new on card, and you have to actually look it up because – it doesn't, even if you look on the candy, you would figure since it's candy and it has to have a shelf life, you still, I can't see where there's dates on anything. I mean, you can get the Pez dispenser. I've never found a date on any Pez dispenser ever. So it's tough. What I would do is definitely research a little bit, or unless you can get them super cheap, because I've bought a lot of stuff. When I first started collecting, there was a year in the 60s before a certain year they didn't make the feet on the Pez dispensers. They were flat all the way down. And that was a key mark to know that this was a sixties vintage Pez dispenser. Well, now they replicate those. So that doesn't even help us collectors anymore. Cause now they can make, they make them like that too. Mm-hmm. They ruined it. So yeah, I would definitely research what you're getting and uh, you can look it up and you can match it to what they have online. It, it's hard to place how old they are just seeing them in a store. <clears throat> the only ones that I know recently that I know I have their vintage is because I've never seen a Pez dispenser come with those little body armor mm. outfits before. I've never seen yeah, that. You showed one on the other channel that had like a gun. Yeah, one of them has like you know, or something with armor and a gun. Armor and a gun. Yeah, it was, I never seen them make that before. And sure enough, I could place Pretty those wild. in the early eighties. Yeah, I don't think they did them very long because I've never seen them before. Judson Osgood says um, The Dark Knight was the best Batman movie series in my opinion That being Bale Batman He's a hell of an actor That's no doubt I do like that they brought it I thought The Games was good Mm -hmm. I thought The Dark Knight was great But then Dark Knight Rises And everything falls apart Yeah and they really don't bring in The third Matrix Yeah Matrix one, amazing. Matrix two. All right, Uber, take care, brother. It was acceptable. Yeah. Matrix three, like they just like run out of ideas and like let's just pull the plug on it. Yeah, let's get rid of it, get it over with. Yeah, you're right. The first one when they started off, it was good. I thought the game was amazing. I love that Liam Neeson was Razal. Yeah, Razal Ghul. Yeah, he's a hell of an actor too. Yeah. I thought Rises was me. And as great as Dark Knight is and, you know, Ledger being Joker and all that. Yeah. The cell phone sonar thing just 
was a real big stain on that movie for me. Yeah. <laughs> and like Lucius not wanting to give him the ability to use it and all that. And yeah. It's like I own this company and all this money. <laughs> That's true. Mario Diaz says Inspector Gadget's transforming mobile mobile is although cheesy, one of the iconic dark horse great eighties vehicles. I liked uh, the first I used to love the gadget cartoon as a kid. I thought his car was cool. It was like a cooler DeLorean. That's true. Yeah. No, that was cool. And I liked the first movie too. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, actually, speaking of toys and the uh I wanna say it was late eighties. They did an Inspector Gadget toy for McDonald's. And I remember my mom drive for my little brother driving all over the place to or maybe it was night. It might have been early nineties. And I she has it complete somewhere where you like, you know, one happy male might have a leg and then the next week the, they would have the head. And you had to keep collecting them. But that thing actually had like little weapons and stuff come out of them and springs. I got to find out where she's hiding it because I need to put that in my collection. <laughs> Inferno Wrestling Showcase. How about the Karate Kid 80s fig? Do you have a big assortment of them? Those figs were amazing, especially with the fighting play set. Oh, man. Believe me, that's it's th those are made by Rimco. Rimco is one of my favorite toy lines. Uh, I, I love that, that wave of Karate Kid toys from the 80s. I do have, I think, three. Uh, one of them having like the 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 older guy that was like uh, Miyagi grew up with. You remember when he in two they go back to his hometown <clears throat> and uh, the old man that was his buddy that he grew up with that wouldn't talk to him anymore. I have that guy new on card with the little board he'd break. So I have some of the accessories. I got a few. I want them all, but like he's talking about the play sets and stuff. Stuff so expensive now; it's hard to get a hold of. But yeah, if I could ever get it, I will for sure. It's one of the better, one of my favorites. Y'all can't eat or drink until I'm done. Do you remember Karate Fighters? Yeah, Karate Fighters. Yeah. I mean, if I can, I've got like a bunch of, I like some stuff like that. That's not like the mainstream, you know, like, oh, like you, know, you say MOTU, G.I. Joe. I like those kind of toys too, the ones that, but ones that weren't failed. as big. Or, or they were a, yeah they were a flop and those yeah. are the good ones to collect. <clears throat> I like the uh, early two thousands Hellboys. Those things are expensive now. When the wh whenever the first movie came out and they were coming out with I, I think it was NECA like those nice nice Hellboys. I think it was NECA. Those things are like a hundred dollars a fig. Those are Plus, very yeah. To get any of the characters, much less Hellboy, the I would love to have that kind of stuff. Those things was insane. I just saw one today. It was a hundred bucks on one card, or in the plastic, the clamshell the thing. Two thousand four. That's a nice one. Yeah, man. McFarlane and Sculpt are just two things that will never. His sculpts will never be topped by anybody. And he did stuff like I'm sure without the technology at the time, he was doing amazing stuff. Uh, That was that was like you had to have that figure you have right there because I started picking up all the kids like as they were kicking them out you at GameStop or Target. You need this one. Yeah, that's that's a must have if you collect any of those. He should have came with a bigger. He comes with the same stand that the figs do though. He needed something bigger. <clears throat> yeah, he needed something. He's, he's super yeah. top heavy. Another thing that Donnie pointed out: the fact that these are not articulated to close is a little. Oh, that's true. But then yeah. again, this is a McFarlane. It's more about like stunning, ridiculous detail than it is. Yeah. I'd rather capture him and uh, pre pose something that looks you awesome. You got elbow, you got hand. There is a, some articulation in this thing. It's not a statue. No. Uh, there's just like, have you ever watched uh, that guy, Talker Art? He's the same yeah, way. He, he, he would rather have. The detail and lose the articulation. I kind of, I'm kind of the same way. I guess because of some of us older guys, we grew up with the articulation we Five had in points. the 80s. <laughs> yeah, we're used to that, so it's not a big deal that we don't have double and triple elbow. 
<laughs> G.I. Joe's kind of spoiled with stuff because those little suckers. Yeah, that was a lot. You could do the bicep. You could put them in the same. Yeah. Yep. We're used to not just this is our figures right here, like earlier. 2004 Mesco. Yeah, I hope that, uh, yeah, he's right. Mesco Hellboy Toys for the new movie. <clears throat> you know, it'd be probably cheaper for us to get if we get them as they come out. Judson, you should definitely open your Demigorgon. It's amazing in hand. All right, Funko J, thanks for coming by, stopping by. Hi, Funko J. Pleasure having you. That was the originator. Funko J is the originator of the that six-pack jam we all did. She's the yeah. one that started it. Her and her dad are great creators. Yeah. Have they you seen a real video movie. of him making that little base for that Chewbacca? I think that's a, something that people would like. I, I was talking to him about that on uh, Instagram, and I told he was curious about what I thought about him. God, his his attention think, to details and <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a niche that I think would he could uh, do good on. Well, there's that one guy; he's very popular. I think his name's uh, Bearded Pop Hunter. Yeah. Uh, and he, his wife does these custom glitter pops. She makes them yeah. herself and yeah. you can pick, she'll, she'll do uh you can actually get her to, to do them for you. She can glitter any pop that you want. Yeah. And I think the same for him, if he gets into, cause he's done some clean streamline, like looking stuff. And then he's done some like for chewy, you know, that looks like earthy foresty. I think that people would ask, for, you know, do commissions for that kind of stuff. Eric Ram, this channel is for collecting vintage, modern toys, action figures, collectibles, comic books, geek-related merchandise. It's about geeking out. That's true. Yeah, we're this is like a safe haven. This little, you know, because a lot of people they I've heard they worry about. Uh, I'm a 50 year old or a 40 year old toy collector. You know, am I going to catch beef out in the real right. world? But here we're all the same. You know, we're not out hurting nobody. And no, I, I you know, I, I guess I'm probably thought about it, too. But I see people 20, 30 years older than me doing it. So, you know, that's awesome. That's inspiring. Yeah, they're still and doing like it. Uh, what's his name? We hang out with Kyle and Kyle's just a freaking baby. Yeah. But it's fun at the same time to see his excitement. The fact that we as guys that are more than double his age have stuff. That, yeah. that we have in common and we can still be there would otherwise be no reason for us to talk to him that's right it's the beauty of the hobby that ties people from all backgrounds ages yeah. what you know regardless of what part of the country you grew up I mean you you played with toys when you were a kid and you allow yourself to collect them in your adult life. They bring you some form of gratitude and happiness. And That's you right. take, you take, uh, you know, pride in your collection. Yeah. That's right. Judson's right. You know, Keeps it does. You, young. you need something to focus on. It allows and... that inner child to have everyday access to and thrive. Like, yeah. It gives you like a, some kind of stress relief, you know, to be able to just to take joy in your and pride in your stuff. You know, it's a good thing. You got to know your limits, too. I mean, everyone's got different limits. Yeah, I cross them all the time. I, I have to know my limits because because I don't have a lot of expendable income. Yeah. So you got to make it count. So when I do buy something and I'm excited about it, yeah, I'll make a video and share. Look, this is something that I' gonna spend my hard-earned, very little accessible money that I have to blow. I want to show you why I picked this. Yeah, that's right. It means something to you. It's not just that's the thing. Also, is I had to slowly, like, be particular. I guess more particular because I'm the type that you know I'm not necessarily looking for one thing. It's what I like at the time when I'm. If I see something I like. I'll get it, but I have to like, I guess, be a little pickier nowadays, and not just be so wasteful. Cause I go crazy, man. I, I'm a very addictive personality. I'll buy everything if I can. <laughs> you know, I, 
especially when you're kicking out a video every other day and you're buying something every you other day. You are looking yeah. at as your growth of your channel has blown up, your desire to provide fresh content. content for yeah. your, as it's changed the hobby being a toy tuber and a collector. Definitely. Yeah. When you have to be both, you have to wear both hats. Yeah. It changes the dynamic a lot. Yeah, because sometimes you want to just get it out there for people to see it. You know, that, that, I'm not a, that's why I don't consider myself a reviewer. I know a lot of guys that they just do reviews and well, they got to we be on top of the market. Stuff. We can recommend Arthur's channel, Unboxing Art. He's got the voice for it. I love his reviews. I'm missing all my teeth, so I don't have a good voice. <laughs> I love Arthur's reviews because it seriously feels like I can make an informed purchase decision. Yeah. Based on what he thinks and the look of his figure, the links he goes to show you the figs posability. Yeah. If there were any flaws. Yeah. You know, he's, what to look for. He's definitely I mean, a good reviewer. I think he's very underrated. I, you know, I'd, I'd see him growing pretty well, soon. He, he's finally monetized again. He's at the one. Yeah. Thing. He hit the thousand. I'm so yes. proud. I remember watching him when he hit 300 and I was like 150 ish at the time. And I, I, I won my first modern Marvel legend from Arthur and that's yeah. homecoming Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, like I said, again, it's, I think he's got the voice for doing it. I don't know. It's just, I like his voice. I think it's very clear. Yeah, Bluker. Let's talk about Bluker's reviews. My favorite thing about Bluker, and that I say, you know, is way better than what I do, is because he gives you informed information. Like, you know, if he does, yeah. I'm, if he does it or he doesn't know it, he will look it up, and he gives you a full, detailed review, and you feel hey. like you know some background on what he's showing you. He's pretty genuine, and you, that comes across really easily in his videos. Yeah. Like, he just got that Kenner Joker. Mm -hmm. He'll go to the trouble of saying, by the way, there's an alternative version of this Sucker Punch Joker. <clears throat> right. See it, it's supposed to be more expensive than this one. So if you see it and you want to know why it's three times as much, it's because it's the rarer of the two. And if you, you find it for this price, get it, because that's a phenomenal price. Yeah, for sure. No, he's that's I think that right there makes his channel. And he's had a couple of he's like breakout reviews. I've seen some of his when he was the very first to start kicking out reviews over the newer uh, dinosaur waves for the movies. For the 2000 was it 2005? Or? I no, was excited no. when he got his compound because oh, the man. compound that was one that my brother and I we had the Explorer, we had the Jeep, we had the T Rex. We had a lot of dinosaurs, but we really wanted that compound. But my dad wouldn't allow it. My, he wouldn't let our mom do it. It was just too much money. It was expensive. Yeah, whenever I see his, I, man, it's just such a nice piece. Just and, that and iconic I remember form. us like we'd stare at that compound at Walmart <laughs> from the top shelf, and we'd just look how huge the box was, and I'd be like, <laughs> "Yeah, damn, daydream." Like and then you go home and you're not satisfied with just your dinos and your vehicles anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Good like job, Kenner executives. I like, but if, aside from the the compound, him just taking the fencing and the door for his reviews. Yes, in his little review station. Oh and God, I would like just no, to have was, that part of it. As you know, I was in Cincinnati a few weeks ago on business, mm -hmm. and I seen the Kroger building that used to be home to Kenner. <laughs> Wow. On the road. And that was like a forced kind of like weird kind of level, like being yeah. in the birthplace. The was there. Yeah. The greatness was there at one time. And it's not so great now. I'm not knocking the city, but man, there's a lot of homeless, a lot of yeah. beggars. Go Bengals. A lot, a lot of signs, you know, Will. Yeah. And it's kind of unfortunate to see all that. <clears throat> I got a, a few uh, 1990 Kenner Batman toys that I really love. Like I got the Bruce Wayne where you can put all his little outfit on and I've got him complete like twice, I think. Which Wayne is this? The animated series? No, it was the movie. 
Oh. The movie Bruce Wayne, they came out with one where he has like a, a red, a black sweater with red stripes. Mm -hmm. And then on the side of the package, it has like the whole outfit you can snap on him. It was I love cool. how Kenner was getting mediocre lines as well as the big movies, too. Yeah. Because they did the Swamp Thing, the Swamp Thing figures. A lot of people would consider that a very B movie, low end. And yet they went all out on those toys. Yeah. Yeah, they did. It's it's cool to see those. Like you, you see them and you're like, damn, I forgot all about that movie or that flop TV series. Yeah. Had, the Shadow. Had, like, of, yeah. Remember the Shadow? Kenner did those figures. I've got a bunch of those carded. I had I have a few. The transparent so, one was my favorite one. Yeah, I got that one. I got I got mm -hmm. him. Yeah, that transparent's cool. Yeah, there's Bug, JC. There's a lot of good reviewers. You know, that's I think that's why, personally, I'm not knocking anybody that wants to be a new toy reviewer. But that's why I do what I do again, because there are so many good ones. It's so hard. You know, mm -hmm. like, as it is, there's probably a million people doing what well, I do. I mean, you are serving. <laughs> you are filling a void in the community as a scavenger-type hunter. Take care, Inferno Wrestling. Yeah. Who's willing to go to smaller yard sales and out it's of the market. Fun. You know, and I put three, myself and three out there. stores that the pickings are so slim. And you yeah. really are the archaeologist, whereas someone who has the bones delivered to them and they know more about the creature itself. Yeah. If you want to put it in pay, you know, pay uh paleontology terms like that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's what it feels like. Feel like I'm Alan. <laughs> going out on a dinosaur hunt <laughs> Mario Diaz should definitely check out Bluker's video because he's got so much of yeah. the JP stuff that came out this year yeah, Mario. He, including he, he everybody. his the roaring <laughs> T-Rex that can swallow the figures his video went viral the views that's, he got on that that's the video i was talking about yeah he went into the thousands of i think views. it's like eight or nine k views maybe more than that yeah but like you're saying he likes that mattel yeah that's another good thing about david if you you know you if you like a certain thing is he's a completionist that's the type of collector he is no he so is he's gonna he's not gonna stop until he gets everything whether it's uh, he's always on exclusives the list. whether it's ebay <laughs> whether it's amazon Messenger. exclusive I mean, true. Persistence. Are you ready to to put this to bed, or you want to go a little longer? We want the questions have stopped. Mm, man, you know, I wish. Yeah, I can keep going. I don't. Hey, T Dog, I haven't seen T Dog in a while. What's up, buddy? Well, I'm, I'm gonna stay on What'd as long as you want to, homie. Thank you for inviting me to. You could easily be doing this from your phone without me, and you know. No, this, you know great. what? I think we could do this again next time because since really I have wanna, TV, we really want to do a tag team podcast. Yeah, that's we the whole thing about found this. Not a way to do that yet, but we're working on it. This is how we're going to do it. I think we get more people involved in the Google Hangouts, we and we'll start like to add more toy hobby tubers to the tag team. Yeah, we're not an inclusive group. We're not just closed and set to just some people. We are open. If you want to yeah. join, there's ways to join. You just gotta message Kevin or myself. Message we'll invite Donald, you in. Message Overkill. Message Blucher, and we'll talk to we you about how we can help you, and vice versa. Yeah, for sure. It's and that's what the whole idea behind. The tag team, is, the average guy, we're the average geeks, the average guys. You know, it's no one's better than the other. We, and we do a lot of help. And like if you watch some of David's last videos, I was able to help him uh, finalize one of his waves, the collection. I found it cheap, and it, you know, but it's just more eyes for each other. <clears throat> you were in one video. I think that's my brother. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I think I caught him in a video once. You have, a, saying, you have a younger brother? 
man, there's I have there's three of us siblings, right? And we're all 10 years apart. 44, 34, 24. <laughs> we Justin have nothing in common. Part of, uh, cannibals. Classic Cannibals is an awesome Facebook group. If you message any of the people I just messaged and you would like to be added to that group, we'd be happy to add you. And it's an awesome small community of like-minded adult collectors who look out for each other. And uh, there's no drama, which is so yeah, rare. It's real chill. Super chill. Justin, it's just the good thing about... To, to share your hauls and to ask questions and to ask for recommendations. Yeah. To share your content. It's, it's a, I it's learn more every day. Yeah. I learn a lot more every day just being part of all these groups. Stuff I didn't even know or I forgot about. Judson said he don't want his mug on YouTube that no one wants oh, to see. It. There's there's like YouTubers that never show their face. You could just show the your hand. little review station and your hands, and that's it. That's the good thing about it. Man, I just don't care the world. Yeah. When I was I in a small world. town, I would get recognized more. <clears throat> Did I tell you the very first town. time? The very first time anybody ever recognized me as a YouTuber, I was stuffing my face at a Chinese restaurant buffet in San Antonio, Texas, which is three hours north of where I'm from. And this guy recognized me. It was a yeah. surreal You're moment. <clears throat> yeah. And I was like getting a bunch of egg rolls and like, Arr. You're like oh, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> and he came up and he's like, yeah, my son and I, and it was, man, it was, it meant a lot. I was like, thank you. And, I wish I could have got more information from him. Uh, it was just really cool. T Dog, our buddy Hector, who is an elite legend, has some Masters of the Universe classics for sale right now, and he's letting them go far less than the eBay prices. You may want to hit up his channel if you're interested in acquiring some more. T Dog got a good one. Oh. Yeah, he's trying to sell a few, right? Nice ones yeah, in boxes. He has like three or four of them in the white Super 7 boxes. Let me get your opinion on that. Mattel selling the rights of E-Man to Super 7. Man, uh, I was sad about that. They, I don't think I think they look nice. They're, they're pricey. If you look uh, in the description of any of Kevin's videos, you'll see a link to Elite Legend. That channel is where you want to message that channel owner, and he's got three or four of those brand new in the box that he just they don't fit his collection anymore. You could probably make a nice offer on all four and come out very much ahead. Bunch of cannibals. Cannibal I've been wanting to do that. We're planning on uh, being at uh, Lexington. Hopefully, it works out. Yeah. We want that. We've tried a few times now, and stuff I know is you're in the house market right now, and that's precedent. Yeah, it's hard. There's always it seems like there's always a roadblock. <laughs> Every time we get close to, I would like to, you know, I'm I also want to get up into the like Dallas Fort Worth area. There's oh, I would like yeah, to meet dude. Greg, Narc, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, he's <laughs> where David is, Uber Hulk, yeah, Rube the Great. There's a lot of them in that area. Renee's there. Yeah. Venom Fang. Venom Fang, yeah. Venom Fang's Don only four hours. Our, uh, travel guy. He knows all the uh, Airbnb deals. and the <laughs> He's our travel agent. <laughs> For sure. <clears throat> yeah, I think this would be like if we can get it going – as a, a regular podcast, it'd be cool. We could talk about whatever the current events are and, you know, so whatever. About that, Judson. That's <laughs> Lexington Comic Con. It's in March next year. And every year that con just keeps getting bigger and bigger. The interesting fact with that is where I live now is the comic book shop by the guy who organizes Lexington Con, the inner geek. 
that's pretty cool. <laughs> we should. That'd be awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm. I'm all about finding it in the wild, and you know, a good price, something like that. Okay, oh, talk about this. Uh, what the odd will the goodwill company has done the way that they're they're ebaying what stuff is worth now. <clears throat> yeah it's it's personally like my wife and my mother-in-law they they want to a lot of my family wants to boycott them because what they do is they get of course you know they get everything free as it is so the profit margins already and then they they take all the good stuff they weed out all the junk and all the good stuff goes to them an auction website where they're making money hand over fist for anything that's worth it. If you get anything decent at Goodwill, it slipped through the cracks basically. And, yeah, it's an oversight. Uh, upset, upset a lot of people because as it is, uh, from what I hear from actual supervisors there is they don't even pay their uh, employees. They actually have a way to get the government to pay for that as well because they hire a lot of part-timers that maybe have some type of uh, disability. So they get that paid for by the government and then of course they get all kinds of other stuff for being a you know nonprofit or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> but yeah it's they're making a ton of money every which way they can and then when you buy there they're trying to get you to donate more round up this round up that but yeah when they started doing the auction website it kind of killed it for us all it's crazy bro yeah it's just un-american if you ask me so in my personal opinion, if y'all are going to go donate clothes, you know, your kids grow out of clothes or you do donate it to like local thrift stores or, you know, like churches, go to the churches, churches do rummage sales. That way people that need shoes and clothes can get it for 50 cents, you know, and not $8 <clears throat> donate to churches, rummage sales. He's over here. Yeah. <laughs> Puppy problems. What what did what did y'all end up naming him? It's a girl and her name's Raiden. Raiden. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Raven, like the bird. Raven, Raven, yeah. Like the superhero. That's what Sam wanted. <clears throat> I got her on camera for the world to see. She, she's a cutie. They're she's cute when they're little, but feisty, buddy. She is a <laughs> feisty little cutie boy. Most eyes though. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring her back to her mom. <laughs> Here you go. <gasps> There's a lot of Kentucky folks. Love her heart. That's why she's got diarrhea. Yeah. yeah. I need to go get. Some... So when's the vet open tomorrow? We need to worm her bad. <clears throat> I used to do my own. You buy the shots and just lift up the skin under their neck. Yeah, that's what we're planning on doing. It's cheaper. Oh, show. Yeah, you know, wish next time, I think, uh, like I was saying, I can log in through the laptop, but then I can actually use my other account to join Google Hangouts and I could, my phone's clear. I could show off toys and stuff on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Perfect. I just leave this logged in on the side. I could do it, but it's already late, but I think that's a good idea. If you want to do it I now, I'm down. I'm down now. If you want to do it. Let me see if I can quickly create another account. Cause I got a ton of stuff, but I, like you said, I can just. Oh, yeah, I can. <clears throat> I'm gonna rec I'm gonna invite myself. Okay. We still got a dozen folks watching. Oh, it's about to get exciting, guys. Okay, we're nerds. It's not gonna get too exciting. Pretty much. Story of my life. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good night, Jonathan. I'll be right back. Let me go grab my little. Uh, yeah, man, you uh, came in with the clutch on the arm. The guy who didn't want to charge a arm and a leg for the arm. This was uh, just an opportunity to own this that I couldn't pass for such a fraction of what it goes for complete. Thank you, Judson. I'm proud to, uh, he's awesome. He's my most, most coveted piece in my collection for sure. Never dream I would had one. A, ha a few months ago, I made a video and I said, in the video, I was like, what would be a grail? And I'm like, Toy Biz Sentinel, but I'll never have one. But here we are. Don't ever say that in this hobby. You never know. You never know. Some things feel like unreachable, but. Yeah, you get them. Never give up that hunt, right, bro? Never. Don't do it. <clears throat> <laughs> Uber Hulk is back. Because he heard you was going to show your toys all clear. He was the biggest one on there talking about the video quality. <clears throat> I'm gonna Someone show who's these not toys. really known. He's not really known for cutting edge quality on his videos himself. And you know the bad thing is like I'm already blind as it is, so I don't y'all need to let me know if it's blurry. I'm used to seeing in blur. <clears throat> oh, here we go. I misspelled my own name. Eh. Let me just get accept this somehow. So how's life after switch overkill? Do y'all like that switch thing? He just got one. I wouldn't mind having one if money was no object, especially with Smash Brothers coming out. Smash Brothers, have you seen it before, Kevin? Oh yeah, that's I know it's popular. Huh? Nintendo's fighting game with all of their mascots. <clears throat> well, come on, let me in. Yo, do dog is back. Check out this Wolvie do dog. That's a uh, two thousand four. Toy Biz Marvel Legend on the comes with the Sentinel stand. Figure game. He let me use that song he did one video I remember a long time ago. Figure game, figure game, figure game. This is when baths were just. They just, old have, they just don't have this effect anymore. And they sure don't make them that tall anymore. Like where you know you're getting something. You're getting something special. I think I think uh, the Hulkbuster is the closest Hasbro has gotten to the uh, Toy Biz effect. Just on sheer size of it. Oh, this is way clearer. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Now you see two of them. Oh, you're in 4K now. <laughs> 4K, is that what it is? 
You have to do something about the echo. Bro. The echo? Yeah, he, one of your things has to go mute. Yeah, I'm pretty serious. Let's see. Hey, what are you doing? Okay. It's still doing it, even. How's the that? Com the computer's mute. Can, Can you? How's, how's that? that? How's that? Like, yeah, pretty echoey. It's still, still echoey. echoey. It's better. Hmm. It's clear for sure. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh now you can see him. I can on I Hangout, but the live feed on YouTube is not showing. Oh. That's weird. Well, I guess there's no point in doing it then. Oh, oh I, I see. Can you pick? <clears throat> Let me see what I can do. No. Nah. Uh. Yeah, yeah it does say off air. We're learning as we go, bro. Yeah, we, yeah, we are. Y'all do Kevin a favor and like this video. It really does help. Yeah, yeah it does. We'll, we'll get this a lot better as we go. Oh, well. Thought it was going to work. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Oh, kids everywhere. I got the old Marvel uh, Select uh, Weapon X, too, with, without the clothes. Oh, yeah. That's a nice Doesn't one. that come with, like, a tank diorama and stuff? The one I got has like a, it's got kind of I think like the exam table and all the wire the oh, poses. Shit. The original four inch scale Toy Biz Weapon X was a figure I loved so much growing up. Yeah, for sure. With the removable helmet. I mean, I thought that thing was so next level. Yeah. Kenner didn't have anything that touched that. No, that was that was cool. Like Whenever you got accessories. The colors of a Toy Biz superhero figure versus anything Kenner made, yeah. even their Batman stuff, like nothing came close to the the yeah. way the color at the the paint apps popped on on Toy That's Biz. That's true. Stuff. It was crazy. That was at the time. That was that was the best figures out uh, for superhero Everybody related stuff. The Tiger Stripe. From the old X Men line that he came with the Uzi, yeah, and he had the spring loaded claws. Oh yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, man, they had some good stuff out. I got a whole like box of like 40, 30 or forty, ninety, nineteen ninety toy biz area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you someone gave some nice ones in that friend box you got. <clears throat> What's the very lucky? Beautiful figures, dude. They the color still pops on them today. Yeah, you could sometimes you can just tell no one played with them. They were displayed yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, that does make a difference. I for sure. Me and my brother put our figures through hell growing up. We did everything. <clears throat> played in the pool. 
Played in the dirt. Blue I remember for firecrackers, everything. I'm thinking 90 or maybe a little before 90. I remember having like a Zorro toys. Zorro, dang. Yeah, I remember losing those getting buried. <laughs> I used to bring my Rambos to the park and use them in the sandbox. The Rambos? Yeah, the Remco. Those things were amazing, dude. They were, right? I love that bad guy because he had a holster and you could holster his 45. Yeah, that's cool when you get that. that kind so of I thought that was so sick. You get weapons and holster for it. Yeah. Well, man, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead and call it. Yeah, I guess so. I, I, I think we'll, it'll just from here on out, it'll get better and better. I know yeah, I can no. get it clearer so I can show off stuff next time. Thank you, all everyone who watched for as long as you did. We appreciate you hanging out with us. They're definitely yeah. fun. Thank you to all the tag team brethren who stepped in and said, hey. Yeah. We'll get this down. We'll, we need to practice more and get good. Sharpening. Okay. <clears throat> do. Do the do. All right. I guess we'll go ahead and conclude it. You ready? Thank you, Kevin Cito. It's been a pleasure, man. It was. It was a blast. You're the best at uh, that interview style, and I like it. So it helped out to do what we wanted to do today for sure. It was a lot of fun. It was my pleasure. Maybe we'll uh, plan it for next weekend, too. Definitely. We'll pick a day. All right, man. Take it easy. Everybody, never give up that hunt. Pew, 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 pew. And then do go pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> See everyone. Take it easy. <laughs>